Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I just picked up this copy of Betty Crocker's Picture Cookbook and we are going to make Betty Crocker's famous pineapple upside down cake. All right, if you're new here, hi, I'm Claire. Welcome, come on in, make yourselves comfortable. I love vintage cooking. I love vintage cookbooks. I have a huge collection of them. If you like this type of recipe content, I will leave a playlist down below where you will find all of my vintage cooking uh, adventures. Uh, there are some that are really gross. There are some that are really surprisingly good and kind of everything in between. So make sure you check that out. Now today I picked this up at a estate sale. Uh, this is Betty Crocker's picture cookbook. This is the second edition and it is originally from the year 1950. And I think like the classic upside down cake, the pineapple upside down cake is something I very much associate with the 1950s. It's very pretty. It's very like quintessential housewife kind of um, presentation that you, you know, kind of expect and what you've seen in various media from the 50s. Uh, so I was really excited to pick up this book and when I found that recipe in here, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to try it. I've never made a pineapple upside down cake ever. Uh, but I always think that they make such an impact and it's such a pretty cake. So that's what we're making today. I also like really love these vintage style cookbooks because there's just way more information in them than cookbooks you find nowadays. So what they actually have here is several upside down cakes and you start with like a base uh, cake batter and they give you the recipe for that and they just give you some variations and you just have to reference the batter for each of the variations and they do that in a lot of different ways like in a lot of these old cookbooks I found it'll have like uh, one chapter that's all different kind of sauce bases and then the recipes then will refer you back to the sauce base and I think that's like a really good idea so I love that about these vintage cookbooks and I love that we're going to be using that method for the pineapple upside down cake so with that Let's get started. For our pineapple upside down cake, we're going to be using ingredients that are still easy to find even in the year 2024. We have flour, sugar, butter, walnuts, brown sugar, pineapple rings, uh, maraschino cherries, baking powder, salt, and a little bit of vanilla extract. Uh, the variation I'm using today is I am using quail eggs instead of chicken eggs, and that's because my family raises quail, and this is what we use. So it's about four quail eggs equals one chicken egg, so I have eight quail eggs here, but we could use chicken eggs either. It doesn't really matter. Another notable thing about this recipe is that it actually uses a skillet, which I think is great. I love cooking with cast iron. I love being able to go from stove to oven and vice versa, and I use cast iron a lot. So I love the idea that we are going to be baking this cake in cast iron, uh, but you can use a pan or you know whatever like cooking receptacle you have available, but we are gonna do it the classic Betty Crocker way with the skillet. The first thing I'm gonna do is crack all of these eggs. It just takes a little bit longer uh, than chicken eggs, so I'm gonna prep my quail eggs real quick. Our next instruction is to beat these eggs for five minutes until they are lemony yellow in color. I think that's about as thick and lemon colored as it's gonna get. Next, we're going to beat in two thirds of a cup of sugar. Now we are going to beat in six tablespoons of our pineapple juice. It also calls for one teaspoon of flavoring and then under the pineapple upside down cake specifically says the flavoring is vanilla extract. So I think there's other extracts you could use as well, but we're using vanilla. One teaspoon of our homemade vanilla. Now I'm gonna set this aside so we can sift all of our dry ingredients together. I totally got this sifter at a garage sale for 25 cents. Such a good find. All right, it calls for a third of a teaspoon of baking powder. I only have half a teaspoon, so I just like didn't fill it all the way up. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And one cup of flour. This is all purpose flour, but if you wanted a more delicate cake, you could also use cake flour. Now we're gonna beat these together. Next, we are going to prep our cast iron pan. 
uh, with our fun little toppings and such. But I did want to note that while I'm putting this together, I realized that there's no fat in the batter. There's no butter, there's no oil. Uh, so the butter for this recipe actually is for the pan, uh, for like that crust that's on the top and not uh, for the batter. So I think that's kind of interesting, uh, but we'll see how it turns out. All right, here I have my cast iron and I'm going to throw a third of a cup of butter in here and let it melt. All right, to our melted butter, we're going to add half a cup of brown sugar. All right, now we're going to arrange our pineapple slices, our maraschino cherries, and our walnuts into a pretty pattern. So I'm gonna kind of mirror what I see on the paper, however, these are supposed to be walnut halves, but like they don't sell them in halves. They just sell them in chunks. So I'm gonna pick through here and I'm gonna try to find the most beautiful ones and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's funny, I feel like I might be in the minority here, but I love a maraschino cherry. I've always loved maraschino cherries. I would just eat them with like some whipped cream on top, like as a little dessert. Hell yeah. Ever since I had my first Shirley Temple as a kid, I love a maraschino cherry. Okay, okay, there are some walnut halves. I spoke a little too soon. I'm sorry, Aldi. You didn't do me that dirty. There are some in here. It's gonna be fine. And now we're gonna pour our batter on top. Gosh. This feels like not enough batter. It's not covering everything. It's okay though. Trusting the process. All right, she's ready for the oven. All right, I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees and we're gonna bake this for 40 minutes. All right, so technically the recipe said 45 minutes. I did it for 40, there's five minutes left because I have found that these vintage recipes, my oven runs a little bit hotter even though I'm following the recipe. So we're gonna give it a test right now with the skewer, but it looks like really golden brown. Looks good to me, let's take it out. Oh my gosh. It smells so good. All right, so our instructions say to immediately flip it, but do not remove the pan for a few minutes. So I realized I don't have like a big round platter of any kind, but I do have this Lazy Susan uh, from Ikea. So I've got that and I've just got some um, like parchment paper that I put on top and that's what we will be flipping on today. All right, never done this before, but it'll be fine. Okay. There we go, that wasn't so bad. All right, now we let it sit. I've let it sit for about five minutes. So it's still really hot, but let's see. Oh, it didn't work. Well, we lost a couple of our <laughs> of our rings, but it's fine. There we go. No one will ever know unless they watch this video. I mean, it's actually, it's quite pretty and it smells amazing. I think we gotta give it a try now. All right, dear. Ooh. There you go. Oh, it looks delicious. I think it does too. Are you so happy that I made you something normal today? <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. Oh my God, it looks so good. No. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah, wow. It's so good. It's perfect. And the cake is interesting, is the cake itself, like the cake batter didn't have any butter or oil in it. So I knew it wasn't gonna be like a, like regular, like really light fluffy big cake. It's like more dense. 
But it's also got that density because it's got like all the juices and stuff. It's really good. Bravo. Good job, Betty Crocker. There is a reason that this is like a classically like famous Betty Crocker dish. Um, like, is it a pancake? No. No. Is it like a muffin? No. It's really good. It's like a little bit denser than your average cake. Almost like a pound cake, but like not as sweet. I think if I were to do it again, when I do it again, I would try to find a smaller pan. It's like a little bit thin. I would like it to be a little thicker. But my other cast iron pan is like way too small. So I have to find one in the middle. I also think pecans instead of walnuts would be good. I would also like to try some of the other upside down cake recipes that are in there. There's a peach one. That looks really good too. I love peaches, so maybe we'll give that one a try next. All right, you guys, there you have it. We think that this classic Betty Crocker pineapple upside down cake is a 10 out of 10. If you wanna try making a pineapple upside down cake, I suggest you go with the classic Betty Crocker recipe. It's fabulous. Leave me a comment down below. Do you make pineapple upside down cake? Is this a thing that's normal in your household? It's not something I ever had growing up, but I always knew it kind of existed. So I'd be curious about that. And of course, check out that playlist down below if you wanna see some of our previous um, retro vintage recipes. And come on back for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.